The next thing I do, and it's usually because tools like GitHub subdomains take a little bit of a time to run, is I start looking at an organization just using GitHub search. And so that's what we're going to talk about now. I call it Git analysis. It's right here. And um, I have basically created a small little uh, script that I'll take my target and give me some search links for the GitHub uh, just user search. And so I'll show you what that looks like right now. So if I go over here, I can just, I have a small shell script here and it's called git dorks and I just feed it my target. So today my target is nasa.gov, right? And I say no here, and then it'll spit out all these links. And what it's doing is it's just creating some links for me that I can put into my browser. And so the first one is, um, you have to be logged into GitHub and I can grab this link and it'll search for nasa.gov and the word password and the type code uh, on GitHub search. And so if I go to my browser, I have that here. So zoom out a little bit and I am searching for nasa.gov in quotes and password. So you don't need my script to do this. You can just go log into GitHub, search all of GitHub for nasa.gov password, and, um, and you'll start to see entries of source code that have uh, nasa.gov somewhere in there and the word password, right? And so you can scroll down through a lot of this, and some of it is very default. It's not, um, it's you know, it's referencing just the word password, right? It's not, it's not a variable, or it's not a, you know, it's not like any sensitive password, right? But when you start rolling through a lot of this, you can start to get some interesting information. So the first thing you can get from this process is legit emails of NASA. Uh, employees, right? For a red teamer, that's really valuable for me to have legit emails to fish these people, right? So you can see, you know, we have some people at nasa.gov here. We also, like I said, get more information about websites that they have on the internet. Uh, and these are not NASA owned projects. These are other people writing code to interact with NASA somehow. And so you can, they, you can see that they're interacting with this server at NASA, et cetera, et cetera. So I've put password in here, and this is exactly what I did at uh, HackSpaceCon. And, you know, I was just while the tools were running, I'm going through this looking for maybe any leaks that a user has done. Right. And so right now on the first page, I don't really see anything. But one of my other searches is NASA.gov pass WD. And more often than not, um, pass WD is used as a reference for a password variable in code. Right. So it's not it's not just verbatim password, the word it's not pass WD. So if we go through here and we start looking, you're going to have to blur this out but everybody's going to have to believe me. If we scroll down a little bit, what is that right there, David? Wow. So that's a, okay. that's a bearer token for a NASA.gov server um, to log into one of their web applications. It's in a credential file. So you're going to have to, and it's to wow. an FTP. There's also an FTP site referenced here. That's, that's theirs. So we're going to blur this out, but you, you'll have to believe me, David, you can see the password there, correct? I can see it right there. Yeah. Yeah. I can see it. Yeah. So this happens because obviously this developer has, um, you know, committed, you know, this file. They've ever forgotten that it was, you know, online or they forgot that their GitHub account was public or they didn't remember they put this notation in this code or something like that or hard coded the password. They just don't know about it. Right. It just it just happens. And so this happens a lot in bug bounty hunting. Now, GitHub has done, and Microsoft, who owns GitHub, has done a lot of great work to, to notify organizations if passwords are hard-coded in their code. But uh, it works not as well as I think they would like it to because this isn't an employee who's associated to NASA's own GitHub repository. This is a personal repository of like, you know, mine or yours, right, where they have interacted with NASA somehow and they have credentials. And so if I keep growing down here, I think there was actually a couple more that I saw. Let's see here. Here's another bear token. Same guy. Another search that I do in that little thing is credentials, right? NASA.gov in quotes and then credentials up here. So here we're using another keyword. So NASA.gov uh, space credentials. Remember, you got to have NASA.gov in quotes, so it, it force searches NASA.gov uh, and then credentials. And so now if we go through these, um, let's see if we can find anything here. You know, usually you have to, you know, really dig. And so that's why I do this while my other stuff is running. Um, so I have an opportunity to just look through some source code that's been referenced about them online. Um, okay, so tell me what Another this one. is wow. here. Yeah, auth token, right? Yep, so this is a Git auth token. So Git is, they apparently have a source code repository, and you can see that the auth token is for Artifactory. Artifactory houses uh, houses artifacts or, you know, you know, like libraries or pieces of code that, you know, I'm guessing that NASA uses and for JPL here. So you can see their OAuth token wow. and A their API Artifactory API, API key. key. So this is real stuff that happens in the real world. There's a couple of things like verbatim 
these credentials could be used. It depends on if this server is an internal or external server. Now, I'm pretty sure that this one is an external server that I'm looking at right now, but it's going to be blurred to everybody. But as a red teamer, I would take these credentials and just verbatim try to log into the servers with them and see if they were live and still working and everything like that. Now, if they weren't working and it was a username and password, I still have the user and the username and password that they disclosed in this thing and so uh, in this piece of source code and so i can try that username and password on different sites of theirs if i can find out what services they use like SaaS sites or other login portals for nasa because many people reuse the same password everywhere um, so as a red teamer i will use this information to go and try to get initial access in another place if it doesn't work verbatim on the server that's referenced in the source code so that was hacking nasa here with you in under what like a couple minutes i think like yeah, and it's only because I'm asking questions and we're yeah. delaying it. But I mean, <laughs> it's like, I can see how you did this in 60 seconds. It's insane. And it's not it's not a hard concept, right? It's it's using, you know, we we did this for a long time with uh, Google, right? Google dorking, right? And um, yep. I don't know yep. if anyone's been on the show before who does a lot of Google dorking, but this is now just the new school no, version you of should, it. You should, uh, I'm just going to say, do you want Jason to come back and do Google dorking? I think so, Jason. <laughs> you should come back and do that. Go awesome. on, sorry, I interrupted yeah. you. No, no worries. Yeah, I mean, um, this is GitHub dorking. And so there are some automated tools to do this, but but I end up doing um, a lot of this analysis for source code. I usually end up doing it by hand because I just want to be able to look at the code. Sometimes I click into these files and I really want to read them to understand what they're doing. Sometimes they're false positives. Sometimes these servers aren't online and the cred doesn't work anywhere, so it's not a big deal. Sometimes they're uh, usernames and passwords for internal systems. Sometimes developers just put like a dummy password that actually is not like you know, um, a real password to the system, but they wanted to put something in the variable to make it look nice. So um, you really have to go through and look at all these things, right? It's not, um, it's not just push, you know, push button, receive bacon, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely something you have to analyze. But yeah, so there's a there's a ton of different things I look for. And if I go back to my script, you know, I look for the keyword password, you have package manager authentication, um, references, Docker config files, which can contain credentials, and these are all the types of things I look for. AWS access keys, right, is uh, really important. S3 config files, which sometimes contain passwords, HTTP password, uh, Git credentials, Bash RC files, SS, SSHD files. So all of these type of files I know to contain sometimes credentials. And so I will look at my target with these keywords and uh, I will spend a good hour to two, you know, sometimes three, depending on how big my client is looking for these keywords on GitHub for them to, to find different stuff. So that's what I'm doing while all of my tools that take a long time to run are running, basically. Big question is going to be like this script that you've that you so you're speaking about that you wrote, is that available if I take your class or how would I get that script or yeah, is yeah. it just something you use internally? or Yeah, so my script is public. I mean, it, it's just creating these links. It's nothing fancy, but um, it's yeah. right here. Um, I will send you the gist link and um, That'd be great, people yeah. can people can look at the kind of stuff. I mean, the, the important part is this part is like, what am I using? What am I looking for in the search? So yeah, people can grab that. It's it's free. All this stuff is in my class, my um, red teaming and bug bounty hunting class. So uh, if anybody wants to take it and like really dive into, you know, like the whole process, you yeah, know, that's awesome. But. Yeah, I mean, because of YouTube, we can only do so much, right? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, just tell us about the class again. We'll just let's diverge just for a for a for a minute or so. Yep. Tell us about this class. How many days? Um, what do you do? Yep. So my class is called the Bug Hunters Methodology Live. It's my own thing, right? It's uh, 15 years of my experience doing bug bounty, external pen tests, red teaming, all this stuff. But um, but it's the Bug Hunters Methodology Live dot com or T tbhmlive.com. Basically, I teach two days over Discord uh, live, um, but it's over Discord. And I teach a whole bunch of stuff. So um, I teach all of this reconnaissance stuff that we're covering. So introduction to recon, reverse who is, uh, like all the stuff that we're going to go over and way more. Um, and then the second day I do application hacking and analysis. So I do things like like understanding where to hack a big application. I find that like one of my favorite content creators is, is Rana. You work with Rana and yeah. um, she does such an excellent job of um, of explaining the vulnerabilities on some of these sites. But what I find less people teach in the industry is when you're an actual tester, a red teamer or someone who's doing this for a day to day job, uh, those targets that a lot of people train on, you know, there's a vulnerability in that page. Right. So so that's a lot easier than when you get in the work world and you're doing this for a living and there's an application with hundreds of forms, a hundred parameters, a hundred pages, uh, thousands of different ways to try to hack it and you get lost, right? And so the second day, 
second day of my class is understanding how to approach an application. Um, so what are the layers of the application? Where do you look for certain types of vulnerabilities? Um, what tooling do you use to make this easier for yourself? What questions do you ask yourself about the application? Um, and so that's what my class is about. It's less about like, here's SQL injection and here's how you do SQL injection against this form because there's a million classes like that, right? I, I don't need to teach another class like that. I'm sure Rana does a way better job than me. But my class is about where do you look for SQL injection? So um, so that's kind of what my class is about. And I think we've got good news, right, Jason? We've managed to twist your arm to come back and actually do the hacking because that was yeah. like the number one request on the previous video, right? Yeah, so we'll do we'll do some of the hacking on a uh, next episode. Right. We'll finish out recon today and um, and that. And then, you know, as always, my team is available for contract if you guys are looking for red teaming, uh, buttobot.com. So my red team is super legit and uh, we care a lot about our clients. So come check us out.